My father brought his mistress to me just two weeks after my mother passed away and says he found the real love of his life, now he wants us to attend the wedding but my family has other plans. When I, 18F, was 14 years old, my mother caught a sickness and fell ill. She passed away within a month and a few days, and no one expected it. Not even my mother expected her health to deteriorate like this, she believed until the last day that she would recover. The person who took the most care of her in the hospital was my grandmother. My father did not pay her much attention at all, maybe because he didn't think it was that serious at the time, or maybe because of other reasons. Regardless, not even two weeks after my mother passed away, my father brought home and introduced to me his new girlfriend, a woman that he met at work. There has always been some doubt in my head that she has always been my father's mistress since before my mother passed away, but I don't know, I don't like her anyway. I was grieving, and I had to tolerate a complete stranger in my home. Now, my father has announced that he is planning to marry his girlfriend next week and other family members, myself included, are furious. It is like he never cared about my mother at all. The date for the wedding is a day before my cousin's, 21F, birthday, and she was not going to let him do as he pleased. My cousin organized a trip to the beach, which will last a week. It was given to her by my aunt and uncle because she won a scholarship overseas at a college. My aunt and uncle won't go to the wedding, and some of my other cousins won't go to the wedding either, but they'll be going on the trip. My cousin arranged the trip entirely on purpose to ruin my father's wedding since my mother was her godmother. My father was mad at her, but my cousin told him that she's not going to cancel her trip for a second wedding. In her literal words by text, she said, I'm much more interested in seeing the grass grow than in your wedding. Today, my father found out that I will be going on the trip too, and he's totally mad at me. He even cried, telling me that everyone is punishing him for finding love. I asked him if my mother wasn't the love of his life then, and he kept crying, saying that I don't understand because I'm too young. He says that every time I try to talk about something serious with him, even when I want to talk about politics or important things, it's his way of shutting me up, and I hate it. He says he just finally found love, that his girlfriend is the real love of his life, good for him I guess. My mother always said he was the love of her life until the last day. I think I feel sad thinking about how my mother would feel if she heard my father say that he finally found real love, when in my mother's eyes and words, he was her soulmate. Can you really find the love of your life in two weeks? I understand that grief is different for everyone, but who grieved spending Christmas with their new girlfriend and not with their daughter who lost her mother? He neglected me since that time, even if I was a teen, everything was always about how he feels and what he wants. I told him that I will go on the trip and that I don't want to attend his wedding, and he kept crying. My paternal grandmother called me to pray and tell me that I am being unfair to my father, who just found love again. But I just don't want to go, nor do I want to be near him. I stopped being close to my dad a long time ago, and my perception of what a father figure is has been almost totally erased from my mind. Edit. My parents didn't have an open marriage or anything like that. My mother wouldn't have thought twice before divorcing him if he hinted at something like that because she was always traditional in matters of relationships. We were all shocked by the fact that my father introduced his girlfriend while we were all grieving, it's something no one understands to this day. Update 1. Thanks to the comments that day, I decided to talk to my father and ask him if he cheated on my mother. I got really anxious and just needed to know the truth because it was something that made me feel really nervous. After insisting and hearing him cry, he confessed to me that he had been talking and going to places with his friend for a while while my mother was still alive and even before she got sick. My mother didn't know that my father had that kind of relationship, and it was all behind her back. When my mother passed away, his girlfriend at that time, who was just a friend, approached him to comfort him. He didn't say exactly when, but I guess it obviously happened between those two weeks. I want to think it wasn't the day my mom passed away because it was unexpected, and we were all too busy. My father told me that it was the first time they had physical contact, but he always felt guilty about his friendship with that woman. I'm not very familiar with the subject, but I think it's what people call emotional cheating. I only know that he kept it a secret because he knew he was doing something bad. I asked him if he and my mother were having marital problems, and he said no, not at all. According to my father, his friendship with his girlfriend was something he planned to keep a secret forever when my mother was alive and healthy. My father told me that he thought he loved my mother until he kissed his girlfriend and decided that we only live once. That's why he took her home just two weeks later after my mom passed away and did everything he wanted with her. My father's logic was that his job gave him a week of mourning, so according to him, two weeks was enough mourning for me. I told him that while he fulfilled his fantasies, I was alone in our home, and he kept saying the same things like, you were almost 15 years old, you were already a woman, at your age I was already working, blah blah blah. I don't think I'll ever get to that level of maturity to understand his mind. I asked him if he thought about cutting off contact with his girlfriend if my mother found out, and he said something like, no, I wouldn't cut contact with her. It was just an innocent secret, and your mother never found out. I told him my mother would have cut off his manhood if she heard him say that, and he started crying again. But anyway, all of this doesn't change anything, the result is still the same, a father who neglected his daughter. I said a lot of things to him. I've been going to the psychologist for years, so I know how to manage my feelings, but at that moment, I told him everything I've been keeping to myself, and he cried again. 
Isn't that weird, to cry when you're the one who screwed up? I only feel bad for my mother and myself. For now, I warned him that I am going to rent the house to make money and cut off contact with him when he leaves the house with his girlfriend. He didn't complain about that because at least he always agreed that the house is mine. I'm not going to leave him homeless or anything like that. I'm not going to his wedding. I'm not going to invite him to my wedding in the future. I don't care if my future kids don't have a grandparent or anything like that. I think years ago I lost both parents, but luckily, I have people who I can still call my family. I see myself as a person who had to mature quickly. My mother left me in charge of my father, but my father maybe decided to bury his paternal instinct next to my mother, or maybe he never had one. He was always a regular father, so I don't care if I don't see him again. I don't feel anything for my father's girlfriend, but I just don't like her because I would never date a man who neglected his daughter, and she's going to marry a man like that. Anyways, we never argued, and I don't hate her at all. I hope she's my father's final real real love. There are people who commented saying that I was making my father look bad on purpose and that I was probably a brat who has bad behavior just because I'm a teen and motherless. I don't understand what kind of education those people had, but being a teenager doesn't mean that we let ourselves be carried away by our feelings. Sometimes a minor can speak much calmer and in control than an adult, and that doesn't mean that I want to portray myself as a saint. I really don't know where I went wrong for my father to prefer to forget that he has a daughter. I don't know what I could have done wrong. Maybe the key was to yell at him and make a tantrum to get his attention, as some comments said, but I stopped caring a long time ago. Edit. My father also has a house to live in, in the province where he was born, so I think he will move there. The land of my house belonged to my grandparents, and they gave it to my mother when they got married. She arranged with my father that it would be mine when I got old. My mother didn't have a will or anything, the house is more of a gift from both of them. The house is not a mansion or anything like that, and I don't have the papers either, but my father says it's my house, and for now, that's enough. Renting houses is always the most effective thing in my country to have money, and my father agrees because he will go with his wife to other places. My father was never opposed to the idea of leaving the house to me, so it was never a topic of discussion at all between us.